And I didn't go looking for a reason not to believe. My pursuit, my study, was to specifically feel, fulfill my obligation, um, 1 Peter 3.15, where I'm expected to provide an answer, a reason for the hope that I had. It was a way of finding out, were my beliefs actually justifiable? Did, was I able to give good reason for other people to believe this? So you're real heavy into reason. I can hear that in the way you speak. You're, sure. You guys are kind of like intellectuals, and so you have to be convinced in your minds is what I'm hearing. Right. Where else would you be convinced? You know, there are those who would say they are convinced within their hearts, within well, their My spirit. heart does no thinking. It pumps blood. Well, you know, your heart might just pump pump blood now that I'm thinking about it. And, you, and your your heart does more? I, I definitely feel in my human experience something in my chest area that... You should maybe see a doctor. ...that leaps to the thought of a god. And, and you know, I want to challenge I, you. I don't want to... What wanna... if you're wrong? What are you, what are you doing with oh. your future here? Pascal's wager. What, what if, if I'm wrong? You're wrong? Oh my God! What if you're wrong? What if what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Hey, I I got nothing to lose. Nothing. What if the what if the Buddhists are right? What if the Hindus are right? What if the Muslims are right? What if the Zoroastrians are right? Well, you have you nothing pick, to lose. You got to pick which one you want. And right. You know, and I'm I picking... choose the God that would die for me. No. Oh. You know. I mean, to me, that's the man right there. You pick the myth that's most comfortable to you. And what I'm saying is that I don't have any good reason to think that any of them are true. And I'm being intellectually honest. And reasonable. Well, I do believe you're being honest that you don't have faith, and that is a gift that God would give you if you wanted it. What? Why would anybody want it? Why would you want to believe things without justification? Oh, I have. There's a myriad of of justifications to believe. Like what? Like life itself. Life is, a, is, is a, proof. <laughs> life is proof of life. Life tells you nothing about how it got here until you investigate. And there's no reason to think that there's any kind of... Can you give a reason why there needs to be uh, an intelligent creator? Because I have no explanation for right. why I exist without okay. but, an but just because you creator. don't, But just because you don't doesn't mean somebody else could or that explanations exist. Well, I don't live based on what other people's no, 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 experiences are. No, 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 no. Okay, but, but you are doing that. You're no, basing I'm living it, on you're what basing my it experience. on the Bible. My You're, experience in exploring the Bible is I have found life. But it's all through the lens of the Bible. You're looking at everything on it's, what the Bible says. You're well, looking the at Bible it based on, is God's on a word. book that's a How couple do you know hundred that? years old. How do you know that the Bible's God's word? I know it because I know it because See, I know it. You don't care whether or not it's true. Yeah. You want to believe because you want to believe what you want to believe. I it doesn't want matter. To believe the Bible. I that was the last place I wanted to go. I so, went everywhere. Right. I know, I know, I know. I didn't it. want to be moved by Jesus, but he moved me anyway. You're so, kind of a pathetic man that you're such a naysayer to those who have faith. No, uh, yes. Because That's faith so is pathetic, don't you hang think? On, hang on. Why do you care if I have faith or not? Because I actually care about other people. And what faith, are you trying to do? Can, take can I my answer? Faith can, I, away? can I answer? Because I'm going to get to a question here in just a second. But I want to answer your question. Faith, if you're trying to determine out, determine what is true and what is not true, if you're trying to distinguish between fact and fantasy, faith is not the way to do it. You cannot do it by faith. Faith tells you nothing. Okay, you believe that the Bible is God's Word? Yes, I do. Is it in error anywhere? I don't think so. You don't? No. Do you think that instruction that these are instructions from God that represent morality? I do. Okay, so if your child was unruly, would you take him to the edge of town and stone him to death? Old Testament was a, was a time... No, ma'am. You don't understand the scriptures. Are you are you kidding me? I'm kidding you. All right, listen listen to this. If you're going to come on here and tell me I don't understand the scriptures, I'm going to explain to you. If you're going to bring up Old Testament fundamental ideas that God was using to train up the the early no, experiences in no, the faith, you don't know what you're talking about. I I beg to differ, and I'll demonstrate that right now. If you'll just be quiet for a second and listen. 
God in the Bible says that he's unchanging, he's eternal, he's the same now, today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if something was morally correct in the Old Testament, for example, to stone your unruly children, then it should be morally correct forever. The same is true for slavery, punishing homosexuals, not eating shellfish, etc. When Jesus in the New Testament talks about it, he says that not a jot or tittle of the law will be changed until all has come to pass, despite the fact that he personally goes on to violate a number of Old Testament laws. Okay. Number, th number three, please be quiet, let me finish, is the idea that I'm sure you believe that the, that the Ten Commandments are binding. Do you not? I do. Well, okay. That's in the Old Testament. You should look it up. You cannot pick and choose from the Old Testament to say what you want to keep and what you want to okay, throw away. Okay, are you going to let me respond now to all this that you just spewed out at me? Yes. Number one, the Old Testament harshness reflects God's rage with sin. So, so your God isn't benevolent. And he cannot he is... tolerate the wickedness of mankind. He cannot tolerate it. So why does he but tolerate it now? love. Why does he tolerate it why now? Why aren't you letting me talk like I let you talk? Well, okay, go ahead. In his love, he sent someone to offer a way out of this terrible trap that we're all in. Do you not think you're a sinner? Don't answer me because that will get you started talking. Bottom line, you don't understand grace. You don't understand what's been done for you with God himself sacrificing himself. Yeah, I do, actually. And I put you on hold. I didn't hang up. You're rationalizing. You are spinning this to say what you wanted to say. How beautiful and how wonderful it was that Jesus, through his life, death, resurrection, saved us all. What you're ignoring is that what it tells us is that your God is not always benevolent. In the past, he was angry and vengeful. That's not omnibenevolence. What it tells us is that he created this system knowing ahead of time what was going to happen. Specifically created knowing that people would sin and fall away. And he thinks that it's just to punish one person for the sins of another, that the sins of the father should carry on to the son, that we are all responsible for original sin. Those are all immoral principles. Then what he does is he comes out and says, hmm, I've created this situation where I've turned everybody into sinners. So he sacrifices himself to himself to act as a loophole for a rule that he made himself instead of just forgetting instead of just forgiving. It's an absolutely absurd and obscene and immoral philosophy. You can't just say, oh, that was Old Testament, and now we're on to the New. Um, and by the way, there are problems in the New Testament as well. Uh, I've done, a, done an entire dissertation on the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount that goes word for word. You, can't, it, you can say all day long that Jesus came out of love but you're ignoring the ideas of original sin. You're ignoring the idea of an unchanging God. You're ignoring the moral code that Jesus himself supposedly said wouldn't change. And you're doing it all so that you can believe what you want to believe, so that you can focus on the positive bits, the turn the other cheek, and not the eye for an eye. You are picking and choosing, and you can make the Bible by picking and choosing verses. Say whatever it is that you believe want to say. I believe the whole context of the Bible from the beginning to the end. You just demonstrated that you don't. Now, you do you like to hear yourself talk. I so do. Nobody can really demonstrate anything to you because you like to argue, as most atheists seem to really like to argue. No. And it, I really hang on, hang on. I will get back to you, and you can talk, I swear. There's one thing you've got to understand. All I'm asking is for you to demonstrate the truth of what you're saying not simply assert that it's true, not claim that I don't understand because God hasn't given me a gift. Demonstrate the truth of what you're saying. Faith yourself, right? What? See, you say what? Because you were talking when I took you off hold. Yeah, well, you've been having me on hold so that you could hear yourself talk yeah, and so that try we to convince yourself that there's no God, and, you know, you're doing your thing up there, and really I don't understand why you open the lines up when you really don't want to hear what your callers are trying to say No, that's to not you. it. I, what I want is, I, I really wish we could come to understanding about this. If you can demonstrate that what you say is true, I'm perfectly open. All right, to that. well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that you sin? Do you think that you commit evil, immoral acts? Do I think that I've done things which are wrong? Sure. Okay. 
And and what are you going to do about that? I mean, do you have any... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to expect some divine intervention to blanket forgive me from that. Because if I've done wrong to another person, the correct course of action is to apologize and make amends to that person and not blow it all off and hope that some God is going to just forgive me and make it all go away. That sort of mentality allows people to not treat people in a way that is good. If I believe I only have one shot at life and one chance, then I treat people better. Is that what you believe? Yes. One shot? Yes. When I'm dead, it's over. Okay, so you're born, you die, you, you're born, you live life, you do crummy things, and then you die. And that's, no, that's no, your that's, life? What I, that's, that's not it. You're born, you live life, you may or may not do crummy things. You, may then, not, you know anybody that has not done a crummy thing? No. Okay. But, but I'm, you, you, all right, your phrasing was you're born, you live, you do crummy things, you die. That's your take on what the well, your no, life is No, no, that's about. your take on your his take life. on it. I'm saying that you're born, you live, you do some good things, you do some bad things, and you try to make sure that the good things that you do um, outweigh the bad right. things that you do. What do you care and, if you only got one life and no no God is, is involved? Just so, do whatever you want, right? Because there are six so billion wait, other people on this earth who I am accountable for. Too. You think that if if you don't believe in a God, you should just go ahead and do whatever Where they do want? Where do you get a moral compass from if you don't have a God? Why do you think a moral code has to come from a God? And what makes it moral? If God says tomorrow that murder is correct, does that make it correct? God's not going to say that. How do so, you know? How do you know? Because I know the living God. Oh, and you've judged him to be good, right? He's a good God. And you think he's good? I know he's good. Okay. What basis are you using to judge that he's good? 50 years of, you know, half my life. No, 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 no. no. Him, no, no, no. I'm not talking about experience. Him, I guarantee that God I know is a good God. And the last 25 years I've lived... What basis are you using to say that he's good? He you is have a supernatural you, God, and I experience him in supernatural ways on a daily basis. Well, um, I, I guess logical, you're going to have You logical guys. Yes, you, we logical guys who aren't going to rely on faith and aren't going to waste any more time on this. When I ask you what basis you have for determining that your God is good, you completely miss the point and just talk about experience. You can't demonstrate anything you're talking about. You don't rely on reason. You're just going to believe things because you want to believe them. And we're out of time.